What's up, what's up everybody? It's John from Optech coming at you today with a top five graphics cards to buy going into 2017 and for early 2017. So the emphasis is mostly on price to performance for this lineup. We got some awesome cards from Team Red, AMD, and some awesome cards from the green team, NVIDIA. Let's get right into this top five. With number five, I'm going in order of lowest price to highest price, hitting those different price points. So we're starting off with an entry-level GPU at the $100 price category. I'm going with my boy AMD with an RX 460. This one from XFX going for just $99 right now. And there's also some offerings with mail-in rebates, $10, $20 in some cases. You could effectively get this sub $90. And at that point, the price to performance, the cost per frame is really killing it. Edges out that GTX 1050 two gigabyte variant by a smidge and I really like to see that. And this is after the fact of those crimson relive driver updates It's showing up to 8% FPS performance increases for the red team. Something I really like to see. So since Polaris was launched, there's been a real commitment to improving the utilization of the hardware with in November alone, 29 driver updates. And hopefully this performance appreciation we've seen out of the hardware is a, only a precursor of what's to come in the newer APIs like DirectX 12 and Vulkan. So moving it along now to number four, we have another one from Team Red, AMD, the RX 470. This one from XFX, I've done a full review on this card. It has a hard swappable detachable fan, so you can put different fan colors in there to match your setup. So this retails base price 180, although there is a melon rebate for $20, effectively knocking it down to 160. So for all of you that are ready to be like, don't include those melon rebates, man. Either way, 160, 180, it's still the king in this price category. The RX 470 has sort of been the hidden gem with all the emphasis on the 480. But the bottom line is relative to the 460, you're getting about 80% performance upgrade going for that 470, some serious performance gains, and it only trails the RX 480's performance by around 10%. And also one more thing to consider, and this is relevant to all of AMD's lineup, is free sync and the availability of those free sync monitors being a component of DisplayPort 1.2a and generally offers greater affordability with free sync monitor pricing compared to G sync displays, which require NVIDIA proprietary modules. And moving along now to number three, I really wanted to go with Team Green on this one, the GTX 1060. It's just so close at that $200 price category. I'm gonna go ahead and side with an RX 480 for this one, given the recent developments and the recent benchmarks that are coming out after the Crimson Relive update, showing nice little gain in a category that was already so razor thin close between the 480 and the 1060, that's the four gigabyte to the three gigabyte variant. And typically it's not worth the extra buck in those large FPS game averages to go for something with a higher video buffer. That would be the eight gigabyte relative to the 480 and the six gigabyte relative to the 1060. It really is an important question of how long you plan on keeping the card as well as the forecast for the average game VRAM usage going forward. Right now, a large portion of popular games reside between two and three gigabytes, but exceeding three gigabytes at 1080p in games like GTA 5, loading all those textures, and for 1440p, Obviously, a larger video buffer is really important. Little frame dips, split second stuttering for swapping data to the system memory, or an overall reduction in FPS while drivers account for VRAM inadequacy is more impactful here. And for texture packs, multi-sampling, anti-aliasing, or if you plan on playing Skyrim with lots of mods, well, you're definitely gonna want to get that extra video buffer. And lastly, that lack of SLI support with the 1060 could also be something that tips the scales in favor of Team Red, as those crossfire setups, those multi-GPU setups are becoming more mainstream and obviously the cost per frame of optimization and scaling continues to improve, it could definitely prove to be a worthwhile investment. And I have to mention, if you're not on an all peas diet, this is like a Polaris Pascal lineup, but for some old gen tech, look at the R9 Fury right now for $240. You're probably familiar with the performance out of this card. It does have four gigabytes of HBM memory, but the performance amazing for 240. If you don't mind a little bit of extra noise, extra power consumption, 
it's still a pretty sweet deal. And with the latest Crimson Relive drivers, you can use all the software, the UI that that has to offer you. So moving along now to number two. So I'm skipping past 300, $350. Uh, the lineup there is just not, the, really not the sweet spot for price to performance. So I'm gonna move up to the $400 category and for $399, check out 1070 is a card I've covered quite extensively on my channel. So the different add-in board partner cards that I've covered on the channel have really blown me away, really get exceptional performance. You're killing 1080p, taking advantage of that 144 hertz display and for a 1440p monitor, just awesome. And you can also dip your toe in the water, dabble a bit in 4K gaming, especially if you don't mind turning the settings down. And there definitely is a lot of open air design add-in board partner cards to choose from. I'm currently rocking the MSI Gaming X, does have about a $30 premium, $430. And this might not be a bad choice either, so the cost per frame might not be there. And a lot of times it doesn't really matter what kind of high-end custom PCB, 10 plus two or greater power phase design and efficient cooling the card has. It still doesn't give as much of a performance increase as that silicon lottery that is the ASIC quality of the particular chip in your card does. That is the least amount of voltage required to maintain operating frequency. In the absence of pushing the power limit beyond what's set, ASIC quality is king. But thankfully, with these aftermarket AIB cards, they do guarantee a certain base and boost clock frequency. So be sure to check out my top five GTX 1070 video where I list those guaranteed base and boost frequencies. And for number one, we're here already, you guessed it, the NVIDIA GTX 1080. Well, which one? The Gigabyte GTX 1080, eight gigabyte graphics card for $600 on Amazon right now. This is just king of the jungle for super high refresh gaming at 1080p, 1440p, and you can pretty much play 4K, getting you that Micron G5X memory You'll be enjoying beautiful graphics for years to come. For $600, the 1080, I think, is the enthusiast card to get. So some other considerations with respect to all price categories, AMD versus NVIDIA. In the past, NVIDIA's shadow play was one of the features that nudged me towards Team Green. But it's really nice to see with the Crimson Relive driver, AMD has now its own video capture that's more than comparable to NVIDIA's shadow play video capturing software that's succeeding the Raptor capture. And it can easily video capture desktop and games with negligible impact on gaming performance. And you can even custom watermark with Relive's video capturing software among other features. And it is worth considering given that we have seen tangible performance gains out of AMD in just six months through optimizing hardware. So how the cookie crumbles, say two years from now, could be really important with respect to newer APIs like Vulkan and DirectX 12. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my roundup of the top five graphics cards to buy going into 2017 and early 2017. But the takeaway from this video for me is how competitive it actually is. It's competitive at those price points, $100, $200. You could go either way in a lot of those. And that's really what I like to say. The fact that we could sit here and we could debate Team Red, Team Green, what do you go with? That is so good for the consumer to see the competition so healthy, so alive and fierce right now. Well, you guys know what to do. Thumbs up if you liked this video. Comment if you have a comment down below. Let me know what graphics card you're currently rocking in your system or if you think a GPU should have made that on this list that was not on here. Let me know down below. This is John from Off Tech. If you're not subscribed to my channel, Awe of Tech, what are you waiting for? Get subscribed, guys. Gonna bring you some awesome more tech content in the future. Peace out.